the judgment seat of Christ, and only believers go through the judgment seat of Christ. And we can talk about unbelievers. They go through the great white throne judgment. Look, none of you want to go through that, and you don't if you're a child of the king. But, Mark, let's just talk for a minute about how we get ready for this Bema seat. And uh, again, what will be evaluated? And, and just here's some takeaway that I took from the message I heard you give that how we treat other believers can be involved in all of this. Because as you said, many can't get along with other people. And you know what? I noticed that in ministry big time. We are to have a deep love for one another. How have we used our talents and abilities? And then you say, how have we used our money can you elaborate on that just for a minute? Well, sure. I mean, you, you think about uh, Matthew 25, the parable of the talents, uh, Luke 19, and the King James calls it the minas, but I mean, it pictures a, a king, a ruler who goes away and he leaves those who are behind, those who are administrators, with a stewardship to take care of what is his uh, while he's away. And I think it doesn't just refer to money there. It refers to, to opportunities and all of those other things. But certainly it's just the stewardship of our life, and money is part of that. And I think, you know, when we use our talents, our abilities, but how we use our money, and 1 Timothy 6 refers to that. Uh, Matthew 6, verses 19 to 21, talks about laying up treasure in heaven, uh, storing it up there. Now, that doesn't mean we can't save money here on earth. The book of Proverbs obviously speaks to a, a wisdom and some savings, but we're not to hoard it all up down here. And so so, you know, those passages, 1 Timothy 6, 17 to 19, Matthew 6, 19 to 21, I believe speak of the fact there will be reward based on what we've done with the, the money and the, the financial resources that God has given to each one of us. And that's a, a very serious stewardship that we have. Jesus had a lot to say about money during his uh, teaching yes. when he was on earth. It also talks in the Bible about rewards. The Bible says we are to seek rewards. So, I mean, I think this is very appropriate. You go on to say, as a concerns, how we're going to be evaluated, what will be evaluated, how we accept the mistreatment and injustice, persecution. What about when we're scorned? The Bible says your reward in heaven will be great. Again, we're reading about rewards. No, that's right. And I'm, I think, sadly, that's going to become more and more true here in our country. It is becoming yes, more and more true. Absolutely. And, uh, many parts of the world, of course, there's actually physical suffering. People are martyred and, and uh, mistreated. But here in our own country, certainly people are mocked, who are Christians, maligned, ridiculed in our nation. Jesus, in fact, said, uh, you know, blessed is the man who perseveres. Blessed are you when you're persecuted, you know, by others. You know, because so they persecuted the prophets who were before mm -hmm. you. But in James 1, 12, it says, blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. For once he's been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Now, some take the crown of life there to be the crown, which is life. In other words, you're going to just receive life. But the one who perseveres under trial here, it seems like he's getting an extra reward. Uh, the same thing is mentioned in Revelation 2.10. So, you know, how we endure uh, suffering and trials in this life, and of course, that can be the mocking and maligning of our culture, but it can also just be the trials, the personal trials we have of, of illness or difficulties in relationships or whatever it may be. How we handle the trials of life is something that the Lord will, will evaluate and he will reward. Well, Mark, I'm sure you have noted as I have, particularly in the last 78 years, the loss of religious freedom. And I don't know where this is going. Some of that depends on the November election, where that's going to head and all. But it's, it's a very, very serious issue, religious freedom, and the fact that it's waning in America. Obviously, it left the building a long time ago in the Middle East and even in Europe, but it's leaving America too. No, you're right. The freedom here that we're going to have is, is slowly being compressed. And what I expect to happen at some point before too long, I hope it doesn't, but I think that uh, tax-exempt status is yes. going to be evaluated. And I think, you know, ministries who don't, and churches, denominations, whatever, who don't, you know, give in and accommodate things in our culture are going to be seen as haters, and they're going to lose tax-exempt status. Now, you know, that's not the worst thing that could ever happen. I mean, we'll find out then who really is giving for the right reason. Right. But it, it, it'll really put the bite on ministries, though. And so I think things like that are, are going to begin to come, and those are a way then to, to curb freedom, the religious freedom that we have in our country. And I think some of those things will be coming very quickly, actually, unfortunately. Yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I've done programming on that, and uh, I think that's over the horizon. Another item, how we spend our time. Do we redeem the time? The reference teach us to number our days, and how we ran the race God gave us. It talks about in Hebrews, run with endurance the race set before you. These are things that were going to be talked about at this Bema seat or judgment seat of Christ. 
That's right. I mean, I always like to say, you know, everybody, I don't know how much money everybody has, but everybody has the same amount of time. We all get 168 hours a week. And the Bible says in Ephesians 5.16, we're to redeem the time or literally to buy up the opportunities because the days are evil. And, uh, you know, there's the old saying, we need to count our days, but we need to make our days count. And how we use our time, time is a valuable resource. You know, money, we're, so many people are concerned about, you know, their money and how they use their money, and we should be. But theoretically, at least if you waste money, you can maybe get some more of it, but you can't get more time. You know, time when it's gone uh, has slipped through our fingers. And so how we spend our time is very important. And I think a lot of people, again, today just uh, spend uh, a lot of uh, wasted hours. Certainly, uh, we need some relief and some some vacation and time to sharpen the axe in our lives. Our lives can't just all be work or we'll become very dull, but we, we need to be diligent about that. And, you know, God's given each one of us a race to run, Hebrews 12, 1. I, you know, the wonderful thing is I don't have to run somebody else's race and they don't have to run my race. But I'm going to stand before the Lord someday, and I'm going to give an account for how I ran the race that God called me to run. Did I stay in my lane? Uh, did I run that race in a way that was pleasing to Him? And you know, these are things that we all need to be thinking about. They're, they're kind of like the test questions, if you will, that God is giving us beforehand uh, so we can make an A on the final exam.